Hey guys, it's Special Aussie here, and welcome to episode 43 of the San Marino Challenge. Now, of course, today's episode, we're going to go over preseason, and then, of course, take on Sampdoria in the first Serie A game of the season. However, if we look here, and as you can tell by the title of this video, we finally have our new stadium planned out. As you can see, board announced new stadium plans will go ahead. Uh, and basically, I got this just after last season ended, probably about four or five days advanced from the previous episode. And as you can see, the San Marino Calcio board have today announced that the club have been granted planning permission to build a new stadium. Construction of San Marino Calcio Stadium will cost around £22.5 million. The board are delighted to announce that they have been able to finance the project without having to secure any external funding. And additional funding for the project has been secured with a stadium sponsorship deal worth $11.25 million. So yeah, guys, as you can see, we're going to have a new stadium. Um, and actually, it's, it's a little bit better than first thought. If we go into facilities here, as you can see, due to move into the 17,201 capacity San Marino Calcio Stadium on the 25th of the 6th, 2027... Now, of course, that is about, well, just under two years away. So, in about two seasons, or just under two seasons, we'll be into our new stadium, 17,000 capacity, uh, which was higher than the 15,000 they predicted. So, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, and that was sort of around what I wanted. Uh, maybe 18,000 I thought would have been perfect. But I think 17,000, I assume there would be the possibility of expanding the stadium further. Hopefully to 30,000. I think that'd be a perfect expansion size. Um, and yeah, really, really looking forward to, to that happening. Of course, it is two seasons away, so we've got a little bit of time before that does happen. Um, and I would, tr you know, I want to be trying to win the Serie A title before we move into that new stadium. Now, if we go into preseason, uh, we do have transfers to go over first of all. As you can see, we let go of three players, one on a permanent deal. Foliados left to U.S. Catanzaro, 875 k As you can see, um, I mean, it's still a Serie A club. Um, they've, what, just been promoted this season from Serie B. Um, and ultimately, you know, he, he should do pretty well for them. 875k, it's pretty low, uh, but I believe it was about his value. I think he was valued at 900,000. Uh, there was a little bit of interest from a couple of Uruguayan clubs as well. Uh, but yeah, I accepted two or three transfers and he went to uh, Catanzaro. We'll go with Catanzaro. I think that's the correct, correct pronunciation. Yeah, not too bad for him. Um, of course... We, we've got two other strikers that are, you know, miles ahead of him. So it was kind of a natural move. Uh, we then let Zaya, the Italian right back, who came in last season. He went out on loan to Regina Calcio, of course. I think they're in Serie C. Yeah, they're in Lega Pro. And then finally, we let Pesci go out on loan to Venezia, who I also believe are in... Oh, no, they're in Serie B. Okay. That's a pretty good loan move for him, actually. Good stuff. Now, as far as the transfers in, we signed this guy, Van Gelderen. Pretty solid centre-back, three-star current ability. Not the best in the world. However, I did sign him for his versatility. As you can see, ball-playing centre-back pretty well. Can play right-back as well. And then, of course, can also play as the defensive midfielder. And I think... He's kind of got the stats to play all three of those positions pretty well. And I think he'll he'll definitely get a lot of game time this season. Um, especially in that sort of rotating centre-back defensive midfield roles. You know, it's going to be a long season. We're in the Champions League, of course, the group stage. So uh, he'll, he'll get, definitely get some game time. Now, the next player brought in was Rayan Labadie from PSG. Now, this guy is something else. If you look at his stats, I mean, the pace and then those technical attributes for a left winger are incredible. I mean, he is on 29,500, you know, in terms of his loan. 
but he's a four and a half star current ability player. And I mean, if you compare him and Forte, I mean, it's it, there's miles of, of skill difference between the two players. So yeah, Labadee, he'll probably be starting pretty much every game. Forte had a great season. I mean, he was essentially, I believe he actually got players player in Syria. So the players essentially voted him the best player in the whole league. Um, I actually got manager of the season as well, which is worth noting. Uh, the next player is Jan Renault. I believe that's Renault. Uh, 19-year-old Frenchman. We bought him. We actually bought him from PSG for nine and a half million pounds. He's a right winger. Um, again, similar sort of player to Labadee. Uh, he's two years younger than him. So hopefully he'll sort of develop a little bit more and become the exact same type of player. They look very similar. Um, I think Renault is just lacking a little bit of pace compared to Labadee. Uh, but yeah, he is our player. I know it's another right winger. We've already got Nunnally and Vitek, but I thought he's probably better than both of them. And at 19, I think he's obviously got you know a bit of room to, to grow. And at 9.5 mil from PSG as well, that's kind of a low fee. And uh, I, I just I just went with it. I took a bit of a punt, and uh, hopefully it'll pay off in the coming seasons. And the final player I brought in was Jean Luigi, yeah, Jean Luigi, yeah, Jean Luigi, Pisado. Now, really like his last name, Pisado. Of obviously, Piss Pisado. Um, he's a left back. I brought him in as sort of a first team backup. He's pretty good. Twenty years old from Juventus. We only paid what two hundred and thirty k for him. Uh, so I believe he was at the under 23s. Yeah. Um, but I mean, looking at him, he's, you know, a good enough backup and I was looking for a first team left back. Uh, but I just honestly couldn't find anyone that was of any better quality than Jill currently is. And of course, Irma Cora, uh, he wanted some sort of ridiculous 9k per week wage for the backup. Just, it wasn't going to happen. Uh, this guy's on 5.25k. But again, he's basically the same player as Irma Cora, but maybe a, well, he's five years younger. So there's, you know, a little bit of potential there. And again, we brought him in for peanuts. Um, so yeah, I can actually delete that note from uh, from our notebook there because it was giving me this uh, really weird little um, yellow notification thing on our name. So I thought that was pretty weird, but anyway... Um, Let's go over the fixtures. I mean, we played quite a few friendly games. Not too many. Um, Preseason was only four weeks, I believe. Uh, which is about a week shorter than I usually do. Uh, as you can see, preseason, not so great in some ways. Uh, but if you look at the peop people that we versed, they're all, you know, top of their European League, you know, Champions League contenders, essentially. Not contenders, but, you know, you expect them to do well in the Champions League. And I wanted to sort of test ourselves as we will of course be in the group stage uh, we managed to beat FC Porto 3-1 victory there at home all these games actually were played at our home stadium uh, we then lost 1-2 or 2-1 to FC Bayern Munich we also lost 2-1 uh, to Atletico Madrid we then managed to beat Stuttgart 4-1 and finally we managed to beat Valencia 2-1 so as you can see, uh, pretty mixed results. I mean, I guess Bayern and Atletico are the two really big teams, and we did lose very narrowly to both of those teams, so not too bad. Um, obviously, the finances took a, a bit of a dip with the 22 million or 22 and a half million for this new stadium, uh, which was taken out straight away. As you can see, we were up to 60 million. And then, of course, after that, we, we sort of dropped down to, to about 30. We're at about 30 now, uh, which isn't too bad. Well, realistically, we were at 38, and then I made the Renault transfer. Renault. I think it's Renault, but I, I can't really pronounce that every time. Anyways, let's get into the lineup for today's game against Sampdoria. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a weird one today. Of course, Conforti's out with an injury. Um... And unfortunately, Antonio is only just coming back from an injury uh, that he sustained in preseason as well. So it leaves us a little bit short. And of course, I mentioned 
than Gelderin. He's going to have to start it right back today, uh, which is going to be a bit of a test. He's not natural there by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it is what it is. We have to we have to make do with what we've got at the moment. So in goals, we're going to go with Ingvarsson, Van Gelderen, of course, at right back. We're then going to go with Leo and Scarby as our two centre-backs. Worth mentioning that Leo uh, was heavily sought after in this transfer window. And he did have a 3.4 million release clause, uh, which was activated twice. However, he turned, I think it was West Brom and Southampton. He turned both of them down, which is crazy. And I gave him a new contract. So I guess he'll be at the club for a little bit longer. Um, although, I think he still has a... Yeah. So his release clause pretty much got bumped up. Just 1 million. Which is pretty low. But it is what it is. Um, so yeah, he'll be partnered by Scarby. Gilles will be the left back. Toscano, the defensive midfielder. Cizek and Petrovic. Do I want to do that? Mm, I think I do. Yeah, Petrovic. Labadee will be the left winger. Renault will be the right winger. And then of course, Champelat will be up front. The bench today is going to be Pavoni, Antonio, Pisado, Manafo, Sabanda, Vitek, Shokri. Shokri, worth noting that he was really impressive in preseason. Um, and I think if Champalat doesn't play well, Shokri is going to... He could replace him in the siding lineup. So yeah, Shokri, Cesar, Nunnally, Forte, and Ambro. Um, yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. I mean, Sampdoria, they're a pretty good team. So, you know, it's not going to be an easy game. And I mean, the last, what, two seasons, I think we've drawn both of our games. The first, first games of the season. So, it would be really nice to get a win here today. And um, obviously, that's sort of what I'm expecting. We are the home team as well. Um, but you never know. You never know on these first days. You know, preseason was pretty good. And we sort of beat some teams that are probably better than Sampdoria. Teams like Stuttgart and Valencia, but again, I mean, Syria, it's a whole different test compared to a friendly game. Nice little save there from Ingvarsen. So happy, guys, about the new stadium. Honestly, I, when I got the notification that it was 17,000, oh, I was overwhelmed with joy. Champalat, oh, that's a cheeky little goal. The assist goes to Ingvarsson, so he pumped the ball over the top and Champalat with a cheeky little finish past the goalkeeper. That's a nice goal. That's a nice goal. Van Gelderen, pretty poor throw in. Renault, Petrocevic, Van Gelderen, can't finish Renault. Oh, and he's blasted it over. Could have had his debut goal there. That's unfortunate. But we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. I mean, Cizek's not doing too well. And Petra, uh, Petracevic picks up a yellow card as well. But I think the uh, the two French wingers that we've got, they are going to be dangerous players. And then, of course, we've got Chokri. I mean, we've still got Forte on the bench. Like, I think, I think in terms of depth... Apart from the defense, I feel like the defense is very, very weak at the moment in terms of depth. Obviously, we've got Gilles, Scarby, always can rely on him. Ingvarsson in goals. But then Leo, I'm a little bit iffy about. Oh no, Petrocevic is getting sent off. I think he handballed it. Yep. Alrighty, well that, yeah, that's interesting. What are we going to do here? I think we'll just bring Toscano up like that. And we'll just play a bit more flat. Obviously, I'd like to keep a, a defensive midfielder in that sort of position. But yeah, I think playing flat's probably just a little bit more beneficial to the whole team. It doesn't really leave any gaps in terms of uh, the midfield or well, in the center of the midfield. And they get the equaliser there. I'm really, really pissed off because we looked really good in that first half. I mean, they didn't have... It. Well, they had one shot that was pretty pathetic. 
But yeah, I mean, 24 seconds in and we give away the equalising goal. Come on, Renault, what are you doing? You've got to be running after that, mate. Back post. Oh, that's a good clear. Good clearance there. Come on, boys, shut it down. I don't want to go behind within three or four minutes. Cizak, Champalat, Renault, Labid oh, Labadee. Oh, so close. It's got to be a red card. Yep, see you later, mate. Okay, well, it's even now, so 10 on 10. That's not too bad. Maybe now we might be able to push on a little bit and try and get the... Uh, Get the uh, the winning goal, although they are coming forward, and it's pretty scary. Come on, boys. Clear it. Oh, it's a good tackle by Cizek. It's pumped up to no one, though. Unless we can force an error. Cizek loses the ball. What are you doing? You can't lose the ball in that position. Oh, my God. Is that offside? It's offside, isn't it? Oh, thank God. Dude, that was really scary. I mean, what was CZX? CZX coming off. Let's put Sabanda out there. That was absolutely dreadful. I mean, he wasn't playing well the whole game, to be fair. Alright, come on, boys. CZX off the pitch. Let's, uh, let's try and get that winning goal. We just keep losing the ball. We keep giving the ball away in really silly positions. I mean, maybe Sampdoria are pressing us a little bit, but... Ultimately, we're our own worst enemy. Sabanda. Van Gelderen. Don't know what he's doing up there. Chan Palat hits the crossbar. Of course he does. Oh, come on. As if we hit the crossbar. That's so unlucky. Alright, I'm going to tell the boys to push forward here. I really want us to to get that winning goal. Come on, Labadee. Champalat. Oh, ref. Referee. That looked like he pulled him down. Oh, come on. Nothing stupid. Nothing stupid. Van Gelderen. Played pretty well today. Labadee. Labadee. Champalat! Get in there! Come on! Yes! I didn't really know what Labadee was doing there. Because he probably could have shot himself. But yeah, Champalat absolutely smashes it home. And it's good to see two of our, you know, debutantes. Van Gelderen and Labadee both... Putting in very, very solid uh, debuts. And we get the win. I mean, that was that was pretty lucky. Yeah. I'm not going to praise him too much. A good win. Yeah, Champalat with a brace. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, we had the, the three debutantes. Apparently, well, obviously, Labadee's on loan, so he doesn't... Really get mentioned there. Uh, Petrucevic will get a warning for his red card. And then we'll also praise Champalat. I really, really want to give him a new contract. Ooh. Okay, then. Ooh, let's do this live. Let's do this on an episode. Um, finish in the top half. Well, I mean, yeah, we can do that. That's fine. I can't believe he wants to negotiate right now. That is so crazy. He wants really... I can't even offer him what he wants. Oh, no. Oh, no. I can't offer him the wages that he wants. He wants between 70... Well, you know, estimated between 70 and 90. And I can only offer a maximum of 47. Oh, that's so frustrating. I've been waiting for him to... To negotiate with me, but... Oh, this is dreadful. I mean, we'll try 40, but it's just not going to work. Damn it, man. 
that's really frustrating. Um, we're not going to be able to get him. I mean, I'll keep trying to get him on a... I mean, maybe if I bump that up to a million. Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap this episode up, guys. Really disappointed not to be able to give him a new contract because, I mean, he's a, a top, top quality striker. However, we start the season off with a win. I'm pretty happy with that. Of course, a new stadium as well. Really, really excited about that. And, you know, Chan Palat, he's open to negotiations now. So we might be able to get him on a new contract before he wants to start leaving. Of course, probably because we made the Champions League this season and our reputation, I think we're three and a half star reputation as a club at the moment. Um, let me have a look. Club. Yeah, as you can see, three and a half star reputation national. I think that's the reason why he might want to negotiate with us. I think he sees us as a big enough club for his ambitions. Anyways, guys, if you could drop a like and subscribe if you aren't already, that'd be much appreciated. And apart from that, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.